Hello, thank you for uh, joining me in preparation for our study uh, tomorrow night, uh, Lord willing. Uh, Stuart has asked me to take this study with you guys this week and uh, again I know I had to have an introduction on Sunday for the online service and came to the meeting last week but my name is David for anybody who hasn't yet become acquainted with me. Um, the introduction is available on the last online service so it might be worth going there rather than me starting all of that again. Um, <coughs> I'm boring you to tears if you've already heard it before. So yes I'm going through the study with you uh, this week and of course we've been doing studies on prayer with Stuart so far and um, I wanted to maintain that theme rather than coming with come in with something different um, but I wanted to look at at an example of prayer from the Old Testament that we can look through together and see what we can understand from the way uh, that somebody in Scripture prays or converses with God as we'll see in what we're going to look at and I wanted us to take a look at the prayer of Habakkuk in the Old Testament book of Habakkuk. Yes, so Habakkuk is uh, a book perhaps you're not too familiar with, perhaps you are, it's only a short um, book, so we often tend to know the short books quite well, don't we? Um, because we can usually get through them in one sitting, so we may have read them a number of times before. And so considering Habakkuk's approach to God, and what it teaches us about prayer that's the approach today and this is one of those prayers in the bible whereby we have the benefit of seeing god's response uh, it's a conversation between habakkuk and god which is really what our prayer life is isn't it it's our conversing with our heavenly father and so habakkuk is doing that but in a way that we don't necessarily get responses of course in the way that we see in the book of Habakkuk and so we'll benefit from seeing a response to Habakkuk's prayer as well um, this week and hopefully next week I'll, I'll look at the rest of um, the book as well so what are some of the things that we might think about today in our prayer life when we are looking at Habakkuk's prayer and conversation with God. Well, there's the prayer in itself that's contained in the second, third and fourth verses. And he says, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear, or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see iniquity, and why do you idly look at wrong? Destruction and violence are before me, strife and contention arise. So the law is paralysed, and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous, so justice goes forth. Perverted. And the first thing I notice about the um, this prayer, or this part of Habakkuk's conversation with God, is before we even look at the details of what he said um, is that it does away with an expectation that I think we see a lot on prayer particularly in our own time and perhaps we may even put on ourselves but this does away with that expectation um, the prayer is not this prayer is not one of thanksgiving or praise or full of positivity it doesn't follow that popularized uh, pattern that I've heard before of joy, Jesus first, uh, or God first, others second, and yourself last. His prayer rather is actually, and is noted in uh, scripture usually when it's been headed, with the late date, as a complaint. And this is a complaint that Habakkuk has brought to God. And as you see in the, some of the notes I've uh, sent out to you as well, there'll be a few questions with each of these points that we can talk about when we meet together. Uh, but one of them being, is it okay 
for us to take a complaint to God. That's not something I'm going to try and answer. I think that would be really helpful for us to discuss when we do uh, consider some of these things together. So doing away with expectation. The expectation that your prayer is always going to be positive, always full of joy, always full of praise. That we can't come to God unless we're ready to be that way uh, with him. Secondly, on looking at the details of, of the prayer from Habakkuk, he starts really by asking a question of God, doesn't he? Of uh, why hasn't he had an answer yet? Why hasn't the Lord acted in the way that Habakkuk so desires? Uh, how long shall I cry for help? He says. How long is this going to take? How long shall I cry out? How long must I spend praying? Have you ever prayed for something like that? Uh, that is so dear to you and you just feel like you've been praying and praying and praying. Uh, and Habakkuk asks the question, how long shall I cry for help? He even accuses God of not hearing or paying attention to his prayer. Um, he will not hear, that's really not necessarily that God can't hear. Habakkuk knows well enough that God would be able to hear his prayer. Um, but he isn't acting as though he's heard it. The Lord isn't reacting and isn't paying attention to what Habakkuk is raising up. And of course last week with Stuart we considered hindrances to prayer. Um, but what if we don't identify any obvious hindrances to prayer and this is still the situation. Um, very valid reasoning last week that Stuart talked about ways in which God might not hear us and might not hear our prayers um, if sin is evident and, and things like that but what if we don't identify any of those hindrances and it still seems this way as it does with Habakkuk and he comes and he says Lord why haven't you answered yet how long shall I cry for help Thirdly, he is having an honest and frank conversation with the Lord, isn't he? It's, it's very strong in terms of the language used in prayer, stronger than what we would expect to see. And the text doesn't tell us what Habakkuk is feeling, but we can certainly see that he's frustrated and emotional about what he's seeing and what he's praying about. It's very dear to him, it's very important to him. He is praying continually it sounds like he's prayed for a long time it's something that weighs heavy on his heart and on his mind and so he is frustrated and emotional and this all comes out in the conversation he's having with God why do you make me see iniquity and he even accuses God not only of making him see iniquity but for seeing wrong himself and being idle doing nothing about it and that's very strong, isn't it? Um, very strong language. And this really make, starts to make you think, isn't it? And again, will help us to discuss uh, what do we think of, of speaking to God this way? What do we think of the way uh, he is approaching God? Looking at this here, why do you make me see iniquity? Why do you idly look at wrong very strong language and would we pray in that way fourthly the reasoning that that language is so strong and that Habakkuk's approach to God is the way that it is seems to be revealed in this verse the end of this particular part of his prayer with um, conversation with God that he is feeling completely hopeless apart from God's intervention he says so the law is paralyzed justice never goes forth and he is watching human systems uh, in the world failing he is seeing corruption through those systems that the wicked surround the righteous that so justice goes forth perverted that is 
If justice is perverted, there is no justice, is there? So these systems that are set up in this time, the human systems, they're not working. There is corruption. There is the victory of the wicked and dishonest people. They seem to make their way in life, and those who are honest are often victims, those who seek to live well and law-abiding. Uh, do not do well in their lives in this place and that is what Habakkuk's prayers are about for his people so the reason for Habakkuk's emotional state and firm language is revealed he feels utterly and completely helpless he's seen this going on and on and on and on and this corruption and he is utterly hopeless apart from God's help I think God sees that helplessness in, in Habakkuk, and so he responds. And God is able, of course, to be gracious and loving to us, no matter what state we are in. And when we come to him, it pleases him. And then also, as I said, we get the benefit of God's answer. Um, and this is, we'll look at more of the details, of course, when we meet together, and what I have a few notes on maybe what we can learn from what God says to him. The first part of God's answer, he says, Look among the nations and see, wonder and be astounded, for I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if told. Well, that's a strong, a strong verse really even to consider when we're looking at prayer, isn't it? Um, God's answer to Habakkuk there. Uh, I'm doing a work in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. And we do have to just sit back in wonder and awe of the things that God has done and can do. But that doesn't always uh, deal with the frustration that we might have in seeing the things that we pray for in the world continue to uh, see wrong and to see corruption. These are all things that uh, I look forward to discussing with you um, when we meet together in those considerations. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ability to be able to look over your word and see at these times when even people in scripture, prophets, um, in the Old Testament and through the out, uh, throughout the New Testament, that they are human, that they have frustrations and emotions in the same way that we do, and Lord, that you are gracious to them and to us, and to see your hand working and your ear listening to our prayers in ways that we don't understand and we can't comprehend. Lord, we thank you that you are a gracious God who understands our needs, who understands uh, the corruption of the world and who seeks to bring us into right relationship with you. Lord, we pray that you would bless us as we uh, attempt to meet together and make the path straight for everybody to be able to come to the meeting and enjoy your word and fellowship together. Amen. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow.